Hey, what's up, fantasy people? This is uh, Tyler the Waver King Ward coming at you live from my garage the morning after the draft. Yesterday was a big day. We had our uh, tin man draft for our uh, league that we've been having for the last, you know, like 15 years or whatever. So <clears throat> I woke up super early like it was Christmas morning and I went to bed super early because I was kind of mentally exhausted from thinking about my roster for the next six hours. <laughs> I've already got like two waiver claims in. So yeah, I'm putting a lot of effort into this. But anyways, uh, first off the bat, it's probably pretty obvious. Uh, we decided to change our name, put fantasy football in the name. So when people, you know, search fantasy fo football, hopefully this populates uh, more than our foosball name did. So uh, the new name of the show is the Fantasy Football and Show. And um, we're going to keep this name for a long time, and we really like putting out content. So I think we're gonna start. You know, I mean, we've already. I put. I'm starting to put chapters in. We want to get technology and laptops and editing equipment and some graphics. So even if nobody watches this, I want to put out some cool stuff. We both do. So, anyways, uh, that's our new name, and uh, so let's get into critique, critiquing or just going over my personal draft yesterday. So I was I got had the fourth overall pick and the first thing I was thinking is what do people want to listen to me for when I got seventh in a 10 man league last year. But the real, the reality is is uh I was, you know, I had 11 wins going into playoffs. I was tied for the top seed and then um the covid week happened and you know, like four of my top players didn't play that week. And my opposing, the guy I was going against, didn't have anybody on COVID. So um, I feel like COVID screwed me last year. But, uh, you know, what can you do about that? You know, I can, I can only cry so much. There's only so much liquid in this body. <laughs> so here we go. First round, went to plan, Derrick Henry. You know, fantasy MVP candidate. Second round, Javante Williams. So... I was trying to get a lot of the AFC West, you know. Um, I forget the stat, but I think uh, 50, you know, top, the top, like 50% of the top scoring games this year involve the AFC West division. So it all, so what Vegas is telling you is that, you know, all of the high scoring games this year, or most of them, are going to come from this division. So my thought process was to grab people from that division. Uh, so that's why I was getting, you know, Broncos, Chiefs, Chargers. I won a lot of Chargers. Um, so second, Javante Williams. Really happy with that. Third, still going to plan, Michael Pittman Jr. I wanted, you know, he was the last wide receiver other than Brandon Cooks. That's the number one wide receiver on their team. And he has, you know, he's going into his third year. There's going to be a lot of room for upside or growth. And he's got Matt Ryan throwing on the ball now, which is going to seem so much more catchable than that Carson Wentz crap. So we got that going on. And then um, this is when things went weird is because uh, I, th I don't know if it's me sharing all my thoughts with the world, but uh, this was the first draft where Mike Williams and Kyle Pitts were not there on um, the fourth round. And since, I mean, and so when I was looking at my tears, I still had Cortland Sutton there who was the bottom of, this tier for me uh, of wide receivers, and I would grab him no issue. You know, Mike Williams, Cortland Sutton, no deal. But uh, I decided to pivot because I had Javante Williams, and I'm just, I don't want to cap my upside for a given week. You know, I want to be one of those nuclear teams that can get 180 points in a week. And if I want to do that, I need to spread out my skill positions. Um, so I went with, and I had, a, this is a read the room situation type of thing too, Damian Pierce. Because I know that people in my league are targeting Damian Pierce. So I had to get him a little bit early. Plus, he was in the tier of, you know, A.J. Dillon, Chase Edmonds, uh, Etienne, but Etienne wasn't there. Uh, so there was a, you know, he had the highest ADP out of everybody in that tier for me. So, and there was Amon St. Brown and Gabriel Davis and all these wide receivers I really like. So I just said, screw it, you know, I'm going to grab who I need who I believe in, and then come back to these, the, and fill in my wide receivers with the tier that I really like as well. So I grabbed Damian Pierce early, 
but it's read the room type. You know, depending on what kind of league you're in, you have to take your guys when you take them, you know. So we're going to hope that works out. I mean, he looks amazing, and he's got Lovey Smith, an old-school coach, you know. So even if they're down, I don't think they're going to give up the run. So that's one of the reasons I got him. Then fifth round, man, Cortland Sutton was still there. And if you draft Cortland Sutton at his ADP, that's a steal. I mean, he was, like, at the top. And you're just looking at everybody. I'm like, dude, I can't give up this value to just to, you know, pivot and not, you know, have two players on the skill position players on the same team. So I said screw it because I can trade Cortland Sutton if I really needed to anyways. Um, sixth round. I'm still getting that tier that I like of wide receivers. Gabriel Davis. I love Gabriel Davis. I would have got him on St. Brown before him, but uh, he was picked right before. So I, I, have, I have them like the same pretty much. You know, second year, well, I think Gabriel Davis might be a third or fourth year. I need to check. But I know, you know, rookie year, rookie young wide receivers just blossoming. They take giant steps. So Gabriel Davis has huge upside. And then, man, seventh round, uh, Brandon Cooks was the last wide receiver in this tier. So this is the running back dead zone. So that's why I just went wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. Um, if you know anything about the running back dead zone, it's just a bunch of people that aren't good enough to draft early and don't have, you know, there's, it's just, you get stuck with mediocre, mediocrity, medioc mediocrity in the middle of the draft if you draft uh, running backs. It seems to be the top running backs and the bottom running backs you know, for high potential and then already known commodities. So that's what you try to do there. So Brandon Cooks, you know, I mean, a top 20 wide receiver, maybe even top 15 because Davis Mills mm -hmm. is the real deal. Um, and then next, eighth overall, an eighth round pick, um, I love A.J. Dillon. I mean, if you think about, <laughs> he's going to put out consistent numbers. I mean, he's not, he's, he might get like 10 points a week. But then there's potential for huge, huge weeks. I mean, there is potential to, for him to be a top five running back if AJ, I mean, if Aaron uh, Jones goes down. So you, to find a running back like that in you know the eighth round doesn't really happen. So that's why you have to. I mean, AJ Dillon was was. I mean, everybody knows that he was undervalued, but like he was grossly undervalued this year. So I mean, I I drafted him early, and I still feel like I got a value. And then here we go with these running backs. I like you know. So this was the tier. It was AJ Dillon. Then Chase Edmonds, and then uh, so I got these running backs that I liked, and I chose Chase Edmonds over James Cook because James Cook ADP I was playing the ADP game, you know, and so I didn't think there was a problem with that, and that's when uh, stuff went down because if you know this channel, we're James Cook people around here, people. Uh, I don't know, but we like him, and. Uh, so the 10th round, I mean, I was going to get Chase Edmonds, James Cook, and I was like, dude, I'm going to have all these stud running backs, all these people with high ceilings. I'm going to hit on, like, two of these people, and I'm going to win this. But then, uh, yeah, Jason's dad um, got James Cook way too early. I think he's watching this channel. I think he's the ninth subscriber. Thanks. <laughs> so anyways, after James Cook went down, I was like, dude, I just need to grab my, I need to grab my guys, man. So I got Trey Lance, because I still believe in Trey Lance. And, you know, he would have went a round or two earlier a couple weeks ago. But this whole Jimmy G thing and his bad performance last uh, preseason game of scaring people to a point where I'm taking all that risk, man. Because, really, there's, there's quarterbacks. I'll take Trevor. I can still get Trevor Lawrence on my team and drop, you know, one of these dudes on the bottom that I don't care about. So I'm rolling the dice with Trey Lance, because, like I said, I want to be a juggernaut team, you know. And the funny thing is, I was like, oh, I'll just get Brandon Ayuk, and I'll stack. I'm going to stack this guy with uh, Brandon Ayuk. So the next one I checked, uh, you know, I checked Brandon. That fool went like two rounds earlier than Trey Lance. <laughs> so I was marking down. Apparently, people were flying off the board before I could mark it down. But, uh, yeah, I didn't get my stack, so I'm working on that right now. Um, I'm, I'm putting together trade packages for James Cook, and to get my stack, it's never too early to start putting you know, trade packages together, especially when there's you know all this hope for some of these players. Um, so yeah, instead of stacking you know Trey Lance with Brandon Ayuk in the next round, I ended up uh, going with high ceiling. I wanted to get a piece of either the Packers receiving room or the Kansas City receiving room, and I love Juju, but that whole knee thing—I don't want to live the life 
of checking Juju Smith's health every week. So I decided for my personal health, I'm not doing it. And um, he wasn't there anyways, but I got Sky Moore. So Sky Moore, if you pay attention to him, if he can catch the ball, if he can hold on to the ball, he might be great. So he's more of a player I'm going to hold on to for like a month and just see what's going on. And so uh, 12th round, time to go. I mean, there was, you know, some tight ends left. I was like, I'm going to wait, wait. But then you see the wide receivers and the running backs. I'm like, dude, there's no reason. I, can, I shouldn't just take a tight end. I got Cole Komet because, you know, second receiver on a bad team. It's going to be tons of garbage time. He's going to get a ton of targets. There's going to be no difference between Cole Komet and the number five overall tight end at the end of the year. So, And I still might... I'm thinking I might, I need to see who has George Kittle because I need to see if I can throw together a trade package for George Kittle and stack him and Trey Lance and upgrade my tight end position. But I mostly, I need to wait until some of my players blow up and I can trade them or, you know, because I like to trade my players two for one and then I believe in my waiver wire pickups, waiver king ward, you know, to get me through all that. And then 13th, so now we're starting the players. I'm just picking up to see the first week and I'm going to drop. Um, like Julio Jones, man, like I, I, I know he sucks. <laughs> he doesn't suck. He just can't play football anymore. Um, but I had Antonio Brown last year. So I've got, you know, when you own players that do well for you, you have this bias towards that type of player in that type of system. So I just want to see what Julio Jones is going to do with Tom Brady. I know it's probably bad, but dude, it's I'll just drop him and pick up somebody else. I really don't care. Uh, and then 14th, I was surprised Daryl Henderson, Daryl Henderson was still there. So that's another situation. I need to see what the timeshare situation is in Los Angeles um, because, dude, Daryl Henderson was not being drafted. And Cam Akers, like, you know, four, fifth round or some crap. And uh, if you listen to Sean McVay, he's got two starting running backs. So, hey, man, I might have half of the starting running backs for the Rams, which is awesome. And uh, Daryl Henderson last year before he got injured, you know, he was easy a top ten running back. And he catches passes. He's not bad. I know they're really pushing Cam Akers, but he's a little guy. And uh, if something happens, they're not gonna, you know, they're gonna be searching the, you know, Mike Davises of the world and all that crap. Marlon Max. Um, then fifteenth, uh, I got you know when you're looking at defense, it really doesn't matter. But I was just I I, I was thinking the division of the Ravens. It's gonna be bad. So they're gonna see Jacoby Brisket and. I know they've got Joe Mixon, but they always play tight games. You know, defense usually still scores well during those AFC North games. So, whatever. And then I got D. Hopkins, the kicker for the Chargers. And that's that division. Like, if you can get a kicker in that division, get it. Because Vegas is telling you there's going to be so many points, man. So, anyways, uh, I loved my draft. Um, except for I didn't get James Cook. And then, you know, Mike Williams got chosen. And Kyle Pitts got chosen before I could get something. So I got Damian Pierce instead of Kyle Pitts and Mike Williams, which isn't great. But I still got my Corlton Sutton there because he lasted another round. And then uh, I, my fantasy MVP, dude, for this show got chosen before I could even pick him early. So that's frustrating. But what can you do? So anyways, uh, we're going to be coming out with a new video because, you know, I've already, I've already got waivers out. Uh, but I don't want to be releasing content like I want I don't want to water down our content we're releasing so uh, I'm going to do foot fantasy footballing on a budget and you know because we do free agency with money and so we're going to try to tell you how much money you know I would spend or whatever on these free agents and who to look for because I guarantee there's people on your free agent you know free agents right now that could win you a league because it happens every year. It's just, uh, you gotta be willing to put down enough money to get them in the beginning. Uh, anyways, thank you for watching. If you like this, you can do it in real life and click that little thumbs up and subscribe button and make me feel good about myself and life for like, dude, like 24 hours, I'll be riding this dopamine high. Or you could just make me feel really bad about myself. <laughs> I'd leave a hurtful comment. Tell me my draft is terrible. Why do I even listen to this guy? The, the ducks suck. Quack. Um, but it's okay. I'll get over it eventually. See you guys later.